Hey, it's Saku and welcome to my final scene of this year. I'm super excited to show you this one since I'm very happy with the outcome and in this video I would like to take you a little bit behind the scenes again and also tell you more about the idea that I had about this scene, how it came to life and how I made some of the stuff. So everything you see in this scene was fully handcrafted by myself in dreams on a PS4 I made everything from scratch, all of the environments, dragons, animation and weather effects and also the atmosphere. And in this video I'll also give you some tips and tricks on the way as always. So let's get started. Um, first off I, ha I saw a picture on Instagram which gave me the idea to the scene, which I'll show you right now. It's basically like this, you have fall on the left side and winter on the right side and those are also my favorite two seasons of the year so this is why I love the picture, I love the idea and I wanted to make my own version of it. But this was not actually the only idea that I had because there also was the new special coming from How to Drain Your Dragon called Homecoming and I also wanted to make something for this and yeah somehow those two ideas got mixed up together in one scene. Don't ask me how this happened but <laughs> in the end I think it looks pretty cool so why not. Now let's have a look behind the camera and go into the edit mode. As you can see the scene is based on the idea of the picture. It is split into two halves. On the left we have fall, on the right we have winter. And additionally to that I also added falling snow and falling leaves. If you would like to know how to make water effects or falling leaves I did make a tutorial for that on my channel. I will link it on the info box on the top right now so you can check it out. And for the full side of the forest we have a lot of these leaves covering the ground as well as um, some of the branches and rocks as well. And in the background we have a little park bench and a lantern, some sparkles floating around and I think it makes a great look for the background of the camera look especially. And on the winter side of the forest we have even more branches covering the ground. You can see them all over the place in this side of the forest and additionally I also added snow to the branches of the trees on this side. This is an addition that I actually made later on, but I think it's one of those nice little details that changes the whole scene, like the whole look of the scene. It makes a huge difference. And I also have some snow covering the rocks. I think this side of the forest also looks sort of realistic. And I really like the outcome. On the full side of the forest I made use of different kind of red and orange shades which also makes it like which also gives it a variety and makes it look all different but actually for this scene I made use of just one single tree so every single tree every single of the branches you see on the ground is just one tree that I created in the beginning and then I created different versions for the full side of the forest and the winter side of the forest I'll turn on the studio lighting so you can see it a little bit more this is the one I started with it has a nice little wood texture and I made the branches with the curvy tool. This is just a darker version of the one and as I said I added a little bit of snow to it. And for the fall, for the tree of the fall side I created some leaves. This is a 3D sculpt. Um, it's mostly made out of transformed spheres. And yeah, this is it for the trees. This is how you can create variety out of one single object, I guess. And then I started to create the rails. For that, I started with a very detailed wooden plank. If you would like to know how to make one of that or a wood texture in general, I also made a tutorial for that on my channel. 
I will link it for you as well. And then I started to spray paint this wooden plank with a little bit of white on the right side, a little bit of orange on the left side to make it fit to their sides a little bit more. And next I started to create the actual rails for the train. This is very simple, I just made a transformed cube and cut out the sides, gave it a metallic look and yeah, I think it looks pretty good, it's very simple. And I also added these nice little tires with bolts to give it even more detail, give it a little bit more of realism and yeah, here's another closer look on the wooden plank with the tires and the bolts on it. I think it looks really good with the lighting as well. And yeah. Here's a quick look of how the scene looked in the beginning or in an early state. I think it's really interesting to see. And then I also started to add leaves and snow to the ramps of the tunnel or the sides. And as you can see, this is just a 3D sculpt. I cloned, uh, cloned that and gave it the other color needed. And on the left we also have additional leaves which are actually the leaves from the trees I used for the full side which are which I also used to cover the ground with so you can see how much of a variety or how you can use an object in so many different ways if you actually think about it. Um, for the texture of the tunnel, for the stone texture, I actually spray painted this and additionally also used the images option of lights. And this is an incredible option. If you don't know about it yet, here I'm deleting the light so you can see what it actually does. For the tunnel I used um, a circle one like. And then here you can see how much of a difference these lights actually do to the texture of this tunnel. It's incredible in my opinion. Here I'm lighting it up a little bit so you can see what it actually does more. And yeah. And in the background we also have fog for the tunnel, but this fog is not actually only for the tunnel, but for the whole background. As you can see, it lights it up a little bit more, gives it more of the natural winter look and also more distance. The same goes actually for the forest. You may haven't even realized that, but there are two fogs for the forest sites and they, they make a huge difference to the whole scene. I'm deleting them now so you can actually see what they do. As you can see, it's completely dark in the distance and especially the, the fog for the winter forest gives it a, a lot more of a winter look and for the full forest, I think a more natural forest look in general. Gives it more distance as well and yeah. Now let's come to the dragons. I absolutely love dragons. This is Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon, one of my absolutely favorite movie series. And this is his little partner, the Light Fairy. Sadly, it doesn't have a name, but yeah, this is just a quick sculpt. It doesn't have an insane amount of detail, but it was definitely a lot of fun making them. And I think, yeah, they look all right. I didn't do too many like 3D sculpting of creatures yet, so this was one of my first tries and I think, yeah, it's alright. In the background we also have um, a few puppets, those are painted black so they're just like silhouettes. The left one is like, oh my god, dragons, and then there's one standing on the rails and yeah. Up here we also have a little alley with the lanterns. The lanterns were a lot more basic in the beginning, but yeah, this is this design is the second version I made. Um, I think the outcome is quite alright. It's, it's still very simple, has a metallic look to it, and yeah, but the lighting they do to the scene are, is actually pretty cool. I think here you can see it in the with the studio lighting, and yeah, I think. This little alley is just for the background, but I still think it looks pretty cool. So if you're up here, you can also see the background is still split into two halves. On the left we have still fall, on the right we have winter. I also added some more um, trees. Those are perfectly um, set up for the camera. And I also added some, some trees with snow on it. Or, some white trees and those are also for the camera it looks a lot better with those trees in the background you can also see the stars in the background and yeah 
the whole thing here is to set up for the camera here you can see a little bit more of the winter forest a lot of the branches and how much detail there is actually in it so this is the scene and now I will show you a little bit more of the atmosphere that I created for this scene. Um, for that I made use of the sun and sky gadget as well as the gradient effects gadget. And I also used the little light that comes from above to highlight the dragons. Um, if I take away the great effects um, you can see they highlight the lights of the lanterns especially. They also give a little bit more of contrast make it a little bit more clean and also give a little bit more of saturation especially to the full side and the sky gadget obviously turns the whole scene into a different thing if we if we turn that off you can see it's more of a daytime i turned it more into nighttime especially because of the lanterns and the fox in the forest and i think it looks pretty good as a nighttime scene but you could definitely make a great uh, daytime scene as well. With dreams it's always pretty hard to decide on what you actually want to do with these gadgets or what the atmosphere should look like just because you have so many options. And also here's another interesting look. Here's um, what is painted in the scene and how the code style and effects actually affect the scene. For the paintings it's only um, it's actually not too much painted in the scenes, mostly the water effects that you see, but without the code styles you see how crazy it is, um, how the leaves look, how the ground looks, um, the high contrast on these like bricks texture that are painted, and also yeah, the whole 3D object just looks so different. You can see how blocky it is actually, but when you turn them on with the effects and stuff it actually turns into something else like 3d blocks actually turn into snow and yeah also you can see how much difference it actually makes when you give it a little bit of shiny texture or yeah i think it it's a huge difference and lastly i would like to show you the thermometer since a, a lot of you are probably also interested in that it has 24 percent um, gameplay space, 35% graphic space, so you could turn that a much bigger scene as well. So yeah, this was it for my last scene of 2019. The video will actually be up on the first day of the new decade, so I hope you guys had a good start into the new year. I just quickly wanted to thank you for the huge support over the last year, it really means a lot and I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are still with me in 2020 since I'm going to push even harder. And if you found my videos enjoyable or helpful, feel free to support me on Ko-Fi as well. I made a new page there, you can give me a tip if you want to. It's not needed, but yeah. I would also be happy to receive some likes or feedback on this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, definitely make sure to do that for a lot more art, dreams videos, helpful tutorials and guides, and a lot more to come. Once again, thank you, take care, and I'll see you soon.